Hi, my name is Graham Brown. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen to this short audio. And thanks for joining me on this journey. Because I believe we're both on a journey. It's an adventure. Maybe like me, you're curious, you want to improve yourself, and you want to have more out of life than the, what do you call it, the default life plan. So I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur, and that means I believe that life is an adventure, and the biggest adventure we can take is to live life on our own terms. It sounds easy, but we all grow up within the confines of what I call the cubicle. That's the system that has us studying for tests so we can get good grades, to enter good jobs, to buy cars we don't need, to impress people we don't care about. It's a system that keeps us comfortably numb from the raw thrill of existence. You know, they say here in Japan that the frog who lives in the well doesn't know the ocean. And never forget that the frog chooses to live in that well because it's comfortable. You know, I'm here because I chose an uncomfortable path to follow. And I think you did too. And that's why you're listening to this now. And being a lifestyle entrepreneur means designing your business around a lifestyle that makes you happy, not the other way around, which is the default way of doing things. And that means stepping outside your comfort zone and taking risks. Sure, it's easy to get pleasure from a newer phone, a faster car, or a bigger job title, but it never lasts. It's a lot harder, but far more fulfilling to say no to the stuff and the people that don't count and to create space for the real lasting happiness. So what is the secret of happiness? Well, I think the secret of happiness is simple. Do more of what makes you happy. So find out what makes you happy and become obsessed about building a lifestyle that enables you to do more of that. For me, happiness is my three passions, education, entrepreneurs, and endurance sports. Let's talk about education. I could never follow the rules at school. If somebody said, wear black, I would wear white. Yes, I was the kid that was always breaking the rules, just because I could. But it doesn't mean I was stupid. It doesn't mean I didn't have any kind of capacity to learn. I'm actually very passionate about learning, just not in the traditional way, not in the way that the cubicle prescribes us. I'm passionate about books. I have a weekly podcast, Upschool Book Reviews, where I share the books that I feel will make lifestyle entrepreneurs become a better entrepreneur. I think books have been core in shaping my own journey, my own adventure. Books have opened doors in my mind, given me ideas and strategies to improve my life. If I look at a seminal moment in my life, I can trace it back to something that I read from a book somewhere. And it's amazing, isn't it, that $10 can change your life. Think about that. Where else can you buy something for 10 bucks that can have such a profound impact on you. Even in this world of digital and clickbait BuzzFeed headlines, it still comes back to books. And I also think it's not just about books. Not all classrooms have four walls. So one of the greatest educations, I believe, is travel. And it's something that I've shared with my family. In 2012, I exited a business and rather than go and start another business, we decided to go travel the world. So for five years, we've been traveling the world. We went to and lived in places like California, Florida, Hawaii, Fiji, New Zealand, Japan, Fuerteventura in Spain, Lanzarote in Spain, just so I could do the Iron Man there, Cyprus, Okinawa, the island right out in the middle of the East China Sea, and now in Kanagawa in Japan, just between Mount Fuji and Tokyo. When you travel, you live in another country, you become an outsider, you see what the cubicle is for real, and you see how it holds people back and the stories it tells. And as an outsider, you soon learn the most powerful words for a growing lifestyle entrepreneur. It ain't necessarily so. Entrepreneurs. I'm passionate about entrepreneurs because they have chosen the path less taken. It's so easy to be comfortable, right? 
it's so easy to do what everybody else has done. But to become an entrepreneur, A, you are setting out to follow a dream and B, you have to overcome resistance. And it's not necessarily people saying, no, you can't do that or don't do that. Often it's people who meet your plans with silence or when you tell them about your dreams, they go on and talk about what was on TV or the weather. Entrepreneurs have chosen to live life on their own terms, and that is not easy. That is the difficult path to take. And a big part of that is that they have chosen to embrace failure. If you think about it, the normal salaried life is all about avoiding failure. If you fail, you could get fired. But as an entrepreneur, you have to fail every day, and you have to get comfortable with it and learn that failure isn't fatal. So entrepreneurs are a special group of people, not because they're wired differently, but because they've chosen to live in a world that's uncomfortable, and they've chosen to embrace failure. And that is the only way that we grow as individuals. And we have to keep reminding myself, and that's one of the reasons I do these podcasts, Founder FM and Asia Tech Podcasts. I get to speak to entrepreneurs all over the world. So I'm virtually traveling again. I'm meeting entrepreneurs from different continents with different perspectives, different business models, and I'm learning from them. And I'm reminding myself about the mindset of these people because it's so easy to forget. You know, if you want to fly, gravity is going to bring you back down to earth every day relentlessly. If you want to fly, you got to keep beating your wings. And that's why I do these things. That's why I connect with these people, because it reminds me of what it's all about. Endurance sports. So I think you've got to be crazy to attempt to complete an Ironman triathlon. And that's a 4,000, well, just under 4K swim in the ocean, 180K bike. And then you've got to run a marathon. And for most people, they look at that and think, no way. I mean, a marathon alone is hard enough for most people. But then add to that a 4K swim and a 180K bike in a day without stopping. But you realize that once you step outside the cubicle, those magnified feelings of joy when you complete such a race are only possible when you've chosen to dance with fear, pain, and discomfort in your life. And give me that any day over feeling nothing at all. And that's why the opposite of freedom is security. The opposite of joy is comfort. It's the entrepreneurs of the endurance sports scene that I am magnetically attracted to. Here are the group of people who both broke the rules in the world of work and then set themselves massive goals in the world of fitness. I think they're a special group of people who are driven not by material successes, but in challenging themselves to be better. And that means digging deeper and going beyond pain and discomfort to find out what you're capable of achieving. And to count myself as part of that community, I feel privileged. And I feel really privileged to be able to share these passions by podcasts such as the one that you're listening to. Because there's an audience. People actually want to hear this stuff and connect. You know, I spent years banging my head against the wall thinking, I'm weird. I'm different. I don't want this kind of salary existence. Because everybody around me did. And then I realized, actually, I'm not weird. There's a lot of people out there just like me. And they didn't necessarily live in the same town or worked in the same office. And for me, podcasts are a great way to connect to people all over the world. The self-development author, Jim Rohn, who influenced people like Tony Robbins, said, you are the sum of the five people you hang around with on a regular basis. For me to be able to podcast, to do these interviews, to connect with you now, is an opportunity for me to hang around with people who help me raise my game. Not because I want to compete against them, but I want to compete against myself, my lazy self. So in finishing, I want to share with you 
what's written on my left forearm. As I'm talking to you now, I'm staring down at the tattoo that I've got inscribed on my left arm. And it's a quote from the movie Into the Wild. And it says this. I also know how important it is in life, not necessarily to be strong, but to feel strong, to measure yourself at least once, to find yourself at least once in the most ancient of human conditions. When I'm in dark places, when I'm cycling, when I'm in pain, when I'm in that hurt locker, that quote is staring back at me in the face. It's a reminder. It's a reminder that I don't want to live in the well. I want to know the ocean.